Hey, this is Melissa. Today, I'm here to get started with another Children's Corner Sew Along. We are gonna go back in time. We're actually gonna go back in time about 20 years. I believe this pattern came out in 2003 um, to the Madison pattern. Um, and we are going to update it, make a few changes to it so that we can turn it into a cute little bubble. Um, incidentally, this little guy who's on the front, so cute. He is Kathy Jones. So if any of you've been around Children's Corner for a long time, you know, the treasure that we all have in Kathy Jones, but this is her grandson, and he's currently a junior at the University of Tennessee. So we are really going back, but we are gonna take this little romper like he has on here on the front, and we're gonna turn it into a bubble. And there's some changes we're gonna have to make um, to the pattern, of course, um, as usual, to make those changes. As is, as is, if you made it like this, which of course you certainly still could do, um, it is unlined, but we are going to line it completely. We are taking away these lower leg um, bands and we're going to just add elastic and um, also add grippers. If you make it according to the pattern, there's no way to have grippers. So it's just something that you would just have to pull on the child, you know, undo the straps up here at the top and pull on him for diaper changes, that kind of thing. So um, we are doing it so that we can add some snaps down there to make diaper access a little bit easier. We're also changing up the straps a little bit. I know it's a little bit hard to see from this picture, but the pattern has you do a, um, a horizontal buttonhole right here that the strap runs all the way through and then snaps on the top. So we are taking that away. We're just gonna go with a traditional um, button closure up there. It's really cute. Another awesome thing about this pattern is boy or girl. It can be either one, so that's really great. I'm actually in the sample that we do today. Um, we're gonna make one for a boy, um, but I have made one for a girl. And here's what, here's what you can see that it looks like. It's got this cute little yoke at the top and also in the back, all the, goes all the way around, and then it's just gonna be bubbly at the bottom. Now I say bubbly, this is gonna fit a little bit more like a Johnny than a tailor. So it's a little bit trimmer fit. It will um, poof a little bit at the bottom, but not, um, not certainly as much as Harper or Taylor, those kind of things. If you have a really roly-poly baby, this may not be the pattern for you. It's gonna be a little bit of a trimmer fit, um, but it is super cute. It is a great option for using just a little bit of fabric, special fabric. So this is not Liberty. This is a faux Liberty from Robert Kaufman that I have on here, but um, the pattern requirements for this, um, it says on the pattern back that you need three eighths of a yard for this contrast, but you really don't need that much since we're not doing the leg bands at the bottom. So you can get by with an eighth to a quarter of a yard of contrast fabric. Now that can be whatever you want. You know, you can do your pattern fabric up here at the top, or you can do the fa pattern fabric on the main body and then do something coordinating. So lots of options to make this really, really cute. Um, we do have to line it in order to make the elastic at the bottom happen, to make it happen more easily. So if you're wondering why we're adding lining, that's the reasoning behind that. Um, but like I said, you can certainly um, get this pattern and make a really cute version of it just the way it is. But we are going to make it this other way that I've talked about. So you need the pattern. You need the pattern, the fabric requirements for the pattern. And it says on the back, of course, what you need. The only thing that's not on here that you will need is you need lining fabric. So you need that in the same amount for the romper. So I'm looking on here, it says, if it says half a yard for six months for the romper, you need a half for the romper and a half of lining, half a yard. And then the facings will be, um, you could get it for sure in a quarter of a yard for all sizes. Um, the pattern gives options for doing either um, piping or rickrack right across here. I'm gonna do piping, but if you want to do rickrack, you can certainly read the instructions in the pattern. Now to the instructions, um, we are making enough changes in the way that we put this together that you need to print the pattern. You need to print the instructions that I'm giving you. We are really gonna veer way off of the pattern instructions as far as the order that we do things. And so you're really gonna need to have a copy of the PDF. Um, I have a rough draft of it here, but you're really gonna need to have that um, with you so that you can follow along and um, sew this little bubble. So. Come back with all of your things and we will get started shortly. 
So we need to talk now about a little change that we need to make to the front romper pattern piece on the size 18 months. This is a pattern correction and we need to make a new pattern piece real quick to make everything fit together later on. And it's just the 18 month romper front that we have to do this to. So get that pattern piece out, get your facing pattern piece out, and we are gonna pin them together. We are going to match the um, match at this center front. We're gonna match all the way across the top. And then we are going to match the side seam right here. What doesn't match is this little curve right here, but we want to use the curve from the facing and then the rest of the, the pattern as it is. So what you'll do is go ahead, have everything pinned in place and you're just going to trace around it as it is. And that's gonna give you the correct um, curve right here that will match this pattern piece once we try to put it together. And really and truly, if I were making this in another size, I would go ahead and trace the 18 month size and make that change so that you'll have it in your pattern for the future if you ever wanted to make this again. But that's all you have to do is just change this little curve right here. And um, once you've done that, um, we'll move on to the next thing. So now we're ready to move on to drafting the rest of the, um, the changes that we need to make for this. So the next thing you need to get is either your romper front or romper back and whichever size you're going to make. Now this particular pattern piece here, I have not completely cut out. You can see I've left this little space at the bottom. And if you haven't already cut it out, I would just wait and do this adjustment first and then you can continue to use this as your pattern piece. Um, if you have already cut it out, you can either just make the change on the actual fabric or you can trace a new pattern piece. So three options. But what we're going to do is this pattern has this curve right here at the crotch area and we are going to straighten it. So first thing is to take a little ruler and I guess I need a pin instead of that all, but you are going to um, draw a line from this center line right here you are just going to extend it down and draw a line. So I've just continued this right along there. I do it a little bit again so that it can be seen. So you do that. And then the next thing you're gonna do is you are going to draw a line from this lowest point um, of the pattern right here at this the curve of the leg. You are going to make it straight over to the line that you just created. So this, um, this is gonna create really like a right angle and it's gonna straighten out the pattern piece. So you can see that we are adding just that little, we are just straightening that out. So when you cut the pattern piece out, you will just cut you know, all the way down. Well, actually you're not cutting here because this is the fold. This will be your fold line all the way down then you're gonna cut straight across here and then up the leg. And you're gonna disregard all of this curve right in here. So that's just gonna straighten it out. And I've actually already done it on the pad, the one that we are gonna be making today. So I'll show you what it looks like. And this one I had already cut the pattern piece out of. So you can see the curve of the original pattern. And then you can see that I have just straightened out the curve here. So that's what we're gonna have. We're gonna do the same thing on the front as on the back. So go ahead and do that, making your new pattern pieces, however you wanna do, however you want to mark that in whichever way, but straightening out the crotch is the first thing to do. Okay, let's talk about interfacing to start with. I have interfaced my yoke facings and my straps, just two of the strap pieces um, are all that you need to do, but I did go ahead and interface mine. Mine is a maybe a medium to lightweight fabric, but I did go ahead and do that with baby interfacing. Um, as far as the straps, you're gonna cut four of those. I cut mine an inch shorter than the pattern piece because remember, we are not doing this fold over thing with snaps to close the pattern at the top. We are just doing a button and buttonhole, so it can be shorter. So one inch shorter on your straps. And then on the yoke facing, I did make a little change here to make things easier if you're gonna do piping. Now I've got this one all the way opened up. This one, of course, is still on the pattern, but what, what is hard is to do piping at an angle. 
And so that's what we have right here. So what I did as I came as I came up here, as far as the cutting, is I just curved this a little bit rather than going all the way up to the angle before I went across. So just a little bit of a gentle curve right there in that area. I think from this point down to where my fabric ends at the raw edge is probably like 3 sixteenths of an inch. You don't have to get real technical with that. Um, but just a little gentle curve there will make piping easier later. Now, if you've already cut it out, I sure wouldn't cut anything different if you've already cut that point in place, because you certainly can do piping to the point, but um, I think we did that on another sew along last summer, but um, we're gonna do just a curve here to make things a little bit easier. Um, I did mention interfacing before. We're also gonna need some interfacing later before we do the grippers, so don't put that away yet, um, but we'll do that when we get to another step. So it's time to do the interfacing to the crotch areas in the front and in the back. It doesn't really matter if you put it on the lining fabric or on the romper, outside romper fabric, but you need a piece of interfacing that is one inch wide by the length of your crotch, one for the front and one for the back. Um, go ahead and press that in place. And then these little corners, you'll have a corner on each edge that will stick out past your fabric and you just trim that off so that it's the same shape and size as the bottom of your crotch. So go ahead and do that and then we'll move to the next thing. So let's get started on the construction of this little Madison. Um, I have taken my front and my back romper pieces and put them together with right sides together. You can see here's my fabric here, I'm putting to them together, right sides together, and I'm gonna pin all the way down both sides. Um, if you happen to forget which is your front and which is your back, your back is always going to be longer. They look so similar to each other, but go ahead and pin everything down both sides, and then you're going to stitch down both sides and press everything open. Press this seam and this seam. So do that for your romper, and then we're going to do the same thing for your lining piece. Now I have chosen for my lining this gingham, and sometimes it's a no-no to have um, a pattern fabric um, paired with a fabric with a white background. And sometimes you will be able to see the gingham or whatever it is through to the back. I didn't mind so much on this little pattern. I actually think it's kind of cute that you can kind of see a little bit of the shadow through, but that certainly is something to um, be aware of if it matters to you, but I decided it didn't matter to me. I liked the gingham piping, or the gingham um, lining, rather. Anyway, so you're gonna do the same thing to the front, or to the lining pieces that you've done to the romper pieces. You're gonna sew up each side. So one side all the way up, and then the other side, you're gonna need to leave a space, because we're gonna need to leave our lining open so that we can do elastic later. So you'll sew up, um, and then leave about a four inch space in the middle, so that, um, you know, leave that open so that we can get to that. So you're gonna sew up to here. I actually have a little dot that I put there. Then you're gonna sew from here to here, um, leaving that open and then press everything, press all your seams open after that. I'm gonna quickly move to the next step because it's such a short step, but get your, um, your facing pieces, your yoke facing pieces, put them together with right sides together. And then you're gonna sew just one side with your quarter of an inch seam allowance right there and press that open as well. Moving on to the next steps, now that we have our side seams done and we've got our facing, one side of the yoke facing um, seam done, we're gonna move on to doing the piping. Um, first thing you need to do with your piping is trim your seam allowance to one quarter of an inch. So one quarter of an inch from where the stitches are to the raw edge. And if you've pre-purchased your um, piping, you for sure will need to trim it. Um, and if, even if you've made it, you'll need to trim and make sure it's quarter of an inch all the way around. I have also taken it to the ironing board and pressed it where it's in a little bit of a circle. That'll just help us as we do these curves here to make it a little bit easier to do that. You don't wanna stretch it out a lot, but um, pressing it in a circle will help a good bit. So the next thing to do, now if y'all have watched me with piping before, you know that I really love these little glue pins for piping. If you don't have that, you can use just regular straight pins for this. Actually, I need my right side up because we're gonna work with the right side and um, we are going to place this piping all the way around the whole entire thing. Now I didn't say, I don't think I said, whenever I press this into a circle, 
I had the raw edge on the outside of the circle. So it should be, um, you know, this as my curve is here, there's my raw edge. So probably should have said that before. But what I like to do is just get out the glue pen and just draw a little line. We're not gonna do the whole thing. We're gonna do one little section at a time. I'm gonna do this first armhole curve right here. And then just take my piping and put it on top. And that glue should hold it down all the way up. So we're gonna go right about up into here. Now if you want to add a few little pins um, in the process, you can, but you can see it holds it actually pretty well. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do, now we're here to this little either point or curve, depending on however you did it, and we are gonna have to make it curve around there to go through here. So in order to do that, you need some scissors, and you need to make a few little clips in your piping going up to, but not all the way through those little stitches. And that should help you be able to make that curve go around. I'm gonna do another few. And I'm just clipping maybe every, I don't know, a little less than a quarter of an inch all around this curve. And it's gonna kind of be bunchy there in the seam allowance. But once you've done that, then you can continue with your piping around here. And I'm also going to put a pin in it here at that little corner curve there. See how it just stays down kind of nice and um, just rounded edge right there. So, but it is gonna be a little bit wrinkly within the seam allowance. So let me just stick a little pin there just to hold it nicely and we will continue on. I'm just gonna keep going with my glue. You might like to do the glue um, actually on the piping. That's okay, if that's easier for you. I just did it this time on the actual fabric. Now that we're up to this next curve, we're gonna do the same little thing. Clip with your scissors. Probably four little clips, I think is what I did there to kind of ease it around that corner. Go ahead and get a little more glue into my next section and we'll go from there. This glue is totally washable, so if you get it in a place you don't want it, that is not a problem at all. So I'm just moving around this curve once again to try to get that. So, so that one's down and get a little pin there. And we will move on around the curve. So the curve parts are actually the easiest or the curve, the big curves are actually really easy to do since we've got everything pressed. It's these little tighter ones that are a little more difficult. But um, anyway, you just keep going all the way around, um, doing the same thing at each of these four corners. Um, so you'll have the here, 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 and here, where you have a little bit tighter of a curve where you need to do some clipping. Um, and then everyone, uh, everywhere else, you should be able to get pretty much nice and smooth all the way around. So once you have everything pinned in place, glued in place, where it lies nice and flat all the way around, then you can go and you can stitch right along that seam allow, right along the seam line for your piping. Um, a little bit in towards the actual cording is nice so that this is not visible, um, but on it or to the inside of it um, is the best way to do it all the way around. So once you've got that in place, come back and we will do the next step. So the piping is all sewed in place. I've already done a few of the next steps and I wanna talk you through them now um, after you have it sewn in place. First thing you need to do, and it's gonna be looking like this with your raw edges together, is fold it to the back a little bit and especially be looking at these little curves that we've done and make sure that your piping looks even all the way around. It would be real common for your piping to look a little bit thicker at these curves than uh, maybe in the other areas, mine does a little bit. And what you can do if, that's, if that bothers you or if it doesn't look even enough to you is go back and do a little bit more stitching in the curve. If the, you know, any place where your piping looks a little bit wider, that means that you can sew in just a little bit closer to the cording in there. You know, maybe just like one thread, one needle width 
over just a little bit and that will help take up a little bit of that slack in there so that the piping doesn't look um, wider in those areas. So just you know, a little stitching in whatever the area is where it looks wider and then that should take care of any of those areas where your piping doesn't look as good in those corners. And you may not have had that problem at all, but it is something that I had to do on a couple of these just to make them look a little bit nicer. Um, okay, so after you've done and you've made sure everything's even all the way around, then you're going to take your scissors and trim the seam allowance all the way around. This is a little bit bigger, greater than an eighth of an inch all the way around, but it really will lie a little more flat and the curves will go a little bit easier if the seam allowance is shorter. Also, in these areas, you're gonna have to do a little bit more clipping on these curves because you're, um, you know, we clipped the piping, but we didn't clip the fabric. So, because you want everything to be able to lie down nice and flat like that um, as we sew it in the next step. So, once you have everything, um, done, you can press it, everything clipped, then you can press it where it's nice and flat like this. So it goes all the way across here. It's going to be nice and flat like that. And then we're going to go to working on these ends. So, um, you know, there's piping that goes all the way to the end and we're going to end up sewing. We're going to sew this seam allowance a lot along here. If we don't have the cording in the piping right there, we'll have a lot less bulk in that seam. So what you do is try to get some of that cording out and you may need to get a little pin and dig around to try to get it out, but pull it out a little more than a seam allowance. So, um, and then trim it off. So three eighths of an inch, half of an inch is even just fine, but that's just going to make this flatter in here. So it's not as bulky, um, after the next steps, so you're going to do it on that side and you're going to do the same thing on this side. So you'll have two of those to do that you clip. And then the last thing we're gonna do is unfold where you have just pressed it and you are going to put these two seams that we had left apart. Make sure you don't have it twisted. I have it twisted, that would have been bad. Would have been fixable, but it would have been not ideal. <laughs> so um, then you're gonna put these two other side seams together Go ahead and unfold where you've just folded and pressed it so that your raw edges are together on both sides. Pin that in place, and then you're gonna sew all the way across this short little edge and press everything open. After you have all that done and looking good, come back and we will get this connected to the romper. So I have everything that um, we've done on the yoke facing is ready to go for the next step up here. And then I've got the romper outside fabric here. Um, look at your facing and see if you like one side better than the other as far as the way it looks with your curves and piping and everything. So the, whichever side you like best, be sure you put that on the front. And um, that's what I'm going to do. So I've got everything right side out and this should just fit right inside. And then we are going to pin all the way around. Pin these raw edges. Um, and this little yoke facing is just going to wrap around the whole thing at the top. And so we can I'm going to put a few pins here to start with. Make sure that your side seams underneath the arms match. And you're going to pin everything all the way around the top. So now that everything is pinned in place, let's go to the sewing machine and baste all the way around meaning the longest stitch length that you have on your machine all the way around all of this edge to hold this in place. We're gonna come back and stitch it down here, but it's nice just to have that secured in place when we stitch the next step as well. So based all around the edge, the longest stitch length that you have, and then come back. So everything is basted together at this top edge, and we are ready to sew this facing down to the romper. So you need to secure your, um, your two fabrics together. You can use your pins and you can pin them in place to just keep it down. Now it's gonna somewhat stay in place because it's basted, but probably just a little bit more, you know, along these edges along here is good. So what I've done or what I'm about to do is just glue, um, and you don't have to glue the entire area, but um, you know, just a little bit more glue to hold things down um, as you're going is helpful. 
and um, like I said this washes out so it's not a if it gets somewhere you don't want it to be that's okay um, so anyway once you have it either glued or pinned all the way down then you'll be able to stitch it down now if you happen to have a machine with an edge stitch foot it will help with this if you don't you can use just a general purpose um, presser foot but this is the number 10 foot for Bernina all the other machines or a lot of the other machines have this particular one but it has a little blade down the middle and that will help you to visualize as you're sewing exactly and keep on track exactly where you're going because you're going to try to sew in between the piping and the um, the facing fabric where it's already connected. So it's called stitch in the ditch. So you're gonna stitch in that ditch all the way around. Now, if you try that and it's too hard or you can't get a result that you like, that's no big deal. If you just wanna top stitch up into the facing a little ways, that's okay too. You know, go maybe a 16th of an inch up and go all the way around. If you can get a prettier result that way, that's absolutely fine. Um, some people might like to top stitch in that place after the step uh, after the stitching in the ditch is done anyway. So, um, so many different ways that you can do this. But the next step is to secure it down in whichever way, and then stitch this facing all the way around, either in the ditch or just top stitch very close to the piping. Got everything stitched down all the way around the piping to stitch the facing to the yoke. Looks pretty good. It's not perfect. Um, you have to let go of being perfect um, with sewing with things like stitching in the ditch. It's really hard to get every stitch exactly where you want it to be. But um, if you're not happy with it, take it out and try again. Um, that's usually something you can do, but mine's not perfect and it's okay if yours isn't either. Um, but the next thing is to go on and remove those basting threads. That's why I said to do the longest stitch length that you have, but go on and take all of those out because we are going to trim away the excess fabric between these layers. So I've actually already done it here in the front and you're just gonna trim away the um, fabric behind the facing. You leave just about a seam allowance all the way around. We're gonna go all the way around. That's gonna take away some bulk in the um, in just this upper portion of the bubble. So go in and trim that. After that, the next step you need to do is to stitch your, your straps. Now, if you've interfaced two of them, be sure that you have you know one of each. I've got one here that's got interfacing, and then I've got one here on this strap. But pin them right sides together, and then you are gonna stitch down one long end, across one short end, and up leaving one end open that we are going to um, turn and trim. So go ahead and take care of doing all of those things and come back and we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, after you have your straps stitched together, you need to go ahead and clip the corners. You can trim the seams if you would like. It's not totally necessary, but if you like for them to be a little shorter, you can do that. But for sure, you need to trim these corners and then turn your straps um, outside in or to the right side out and then you'll have a strap that looks about like this both of them will so get both of those get your bodice out your romper out rather and find the back be sure that you're on the back when you're doing this because we're going to go ahead and stitch these in place next um, so get your finished strap and find the end that's still open and you are going to pin it in place to the back romper along the top edge now it needs to be where your seam, your seam line here is 3 eighths of an inch from this corner. So I'm gonna pin that in place and show you. I think I'm gonna pin it in place. Just put a couple of pins in here. So I have got it pinned in place. I have enough along here for my seam allowance to come here, plus, plus a little bit extra just for folding. So it's about 3 eighths of an inch from here to here. And then I'm gonna put the other one on the opposite side. And this is the back of my bodice. So once you have got those um, turned and pinned in place, then you're gonna stitch them down to the top of the romper. And you need to get need to go a little bit inside the regular seam allowance. So I would say a scant one quarter of an inch up in this area to stitch them in place um, so they'll stay in place um, as we sew the next step together. So the straps are stitched at the top of the corner on the back of the bodice and now I'm going to take the entire romper that we have, the outside of it, it's going to be right sides out and I'm going to take the lining 
and I'm going to put right sides together. So that means the wrong side is gonna be out on the lining and we are going to pin it all the way around the top. Now you'll need to make sure that these straps that are kind of loose in here stay out of the way so that they don't get into any of your seams, but you are going to pin all the way around the entire romper top, lining everything up, and then you're going to stitch. After you stitch, um, clip your corners, trim everything nice and smooth, and you'll have to do some little clips in the curves here also, and then you can turn everything to the outside and um, press everything really well. Okay, so we have the top of the romper all put together and we have the straps put in place. All we need up there are just some buttons and buttonholes. We'll do that later. Now we are ready to move to the bottom part of this romper and sew the legs. So. Um, this is something, this is a step that trips people up a lot, and um, hopefully I can demonstrate it here well enough where you can see. Um, but this is how we're going to sew the legs first. We are going to do one leg at a time. So if I look at the romper here like this, you know, this is going to be one leg, this is going to be the other, and then there's a front and a back inseam or crotch area here. So what we're going to do first is just do one side. So I'm going to hold it up like this. This is going to be my side seam here, and I've just got one of my um, one of my legs here all together. So this is the seam we are going to try to sew, but we know that we need to sew it with right sides together. So the way that you do that is you are going to take one hand, and I've got it right here where the seam is here, one hand on the lining, and I'm going to have one hand on the outside on my elephant fabric, and I'm going to bring it around with everything else inside, and I'm gonna put those two places together that I had. So I'm just putting those together, and then I'm going to tuck everything else in. So remember, we're just sewing that one seam. Everything else that goes inside, actually I can pin this together, I don't wanna do that. Everything else is gonna go inside there. It's gonna be all bunched up and wrinkly, and that doesn't matter. So we, I'm just gonna pin this here. So I've got my two side seams of the leg pinned there. And then this is gonna be a seam here that I'm gonna sew. So I can pin this all the way down. And everything else is wrapped up inside there. So we've got one half of it here. And then on this end, you st see I still have some things hanging out. I'm just gonna tuck them in to where I can continue, so everything is inside here. I can continue pinning along. See, I've started down here and I'm going all the way back down this way. So let's put a few more pins in here. Okay, so this looks messy, but it's the way to do it. So I've got this funny looking, it actually looks more like a banana than a burrito, but I guess we call it a burrito because everything else is inside of it. So now I'm gonna go take it to the sewing machine and just stitch all the way along this line. Once I've done that, I can turn it. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll show you when we turn it, how that goes. This side is all sewn, so now we're ready to turn it um, back to the outside. And this side's real easy to turn because you've got a real big space to turn it through. So we can worry about doing some pressing and everything on this side that we have just sewn in a little bit because we are gonna go ahead and sew the other leg. So this one is done. You can see it's all inside there, but not pressed. So we're gonna do the same thing to this other open side. We're still leaving both of these ends open. We're just gonna do these here. So it's gonna be the same thing. And I'm actually gonna kind of roll these up here to make it a little bit nicer, maybe. So I'm gonna take right here at my side seam on my lining and my side seam here um, on the outside, elephant fabric, and I'm going to wrap them around and put them together here in the middle, just like this. So I've kept them together. Let me put a pin here. 
Once again, we've got this jumbled mess here. It's all gonna be on the inside, but once you kind of start unfolding it, which you can do now since it's already connected there, and now we can put some pins in this section. It's really just like we did on the other side. We are just matching everything up. And after I've done all this, I will go sew this seam. You do have to make sure you're keeping all this excess that's on the inside away from where you're gonna sew. But this side still has some stuff hanging out, so I'm gonna tuck it in my burrito and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish pinning this up and then stitch this whole thing and then I'll come back. So now I've decided that it not only looks like a banana and a burrito, but it also looks like a boat. But we have both sides, both of the legs sewn together now, and we're ready to turn it. Now the last, the last one we did, we had a whole leg open. And this time all we had open is just this little front and back crotch area. There's one on each side. Does not matter which one you choose, but that's the hole that you are going to pull everything through. And you just kind of work it through somewhat gently to get everything to pull on through. Really just looks like a wadded up mess right now, but it's really not. So now we have the legs on both sides completely stitched. And so the next thing we need to do, you can see here's what I've got. This one's stitched and this one is stitched. Both of these ends are open. Um, but what we need to do now is press everything. So go to the ironing board and get this pressed really nicely, you know, where your seam is right there on the very edge and hopefully you don't have lining sticking out to the front. But go ahead and press everything for both of those legs in place and then we'll head to the next step. So with the legs sewn and pressed, we're ready to move to these bottom areas that we need to close up. Okay, so there's two different ways you can do it. I'm gonna show you both ways. The first thing you can do is, you know, you have this open area that needs to be closed. First thing you can do is go to the iron and you can press in a quarter of an inch. So you do a quarter of an inch here on the back, quarter of an inch on the front, press it down nice and flat and you can see how nice that is. So once you do, once you press it that way, then you would just stitch right across about an eighth of an inch from that folded edge, that folded in edge, eighth of an inch, and then another about three quarters of an inch from the edge. And that's gonna be the space where your snaps or grippers are going to go. That's the first way you can do it. The other way you can do it, since we have an opening, um, I still have an opening in the lining, another thing you can do if you find this easier or neater is reach in that hole and find the opening, which I've got my hand in here, and just pull it out. Pull it out with the right sides together, and now you can see here it is right here. I've pulled it through that hole. You can see that's my interfacing right there. Um, but you can just stitch all the way across just like that, and um, that will close that one. So either way will work just fine. You just need for both of them to be closed. So go ahead and do that, and then we'll move to the next thing. Okay, legs are all sewn, everything's sewn at the bottom. Now we're ready to move to the casings, and you need to take a look at the PDF and see how far up you need to measure to start your casing. It'll be different for different sizes. For this, this is a 12 month, it's gonna be two inches. So I am going to measure, I'm on the front here, I'm gonna measure from this little corner here up two inches with my little tape measure here. And I'm gonna draw a line across there. That's gonna be the end of my casing. So I've done one side of the front and now I need to do the other side of the front measuring up two inches and then making a line. So this will be the point, you know, where we're gonna start our elastic for the leg. So two inches for both of those. Let's move to the back, and it's gonna be two and a half inches for this size for that. So starting right there at that corner, we'll go up two and a half inches on both sides and make that little mark. 
Okay, so we've got our starting and stopping points on both legs for the casings. And so the way you're gonna do that is go to the sewing machine and you are going to stitch along, you're going to stitch along this edge along here. We're gonna go 3 8 of an inch in from the edge. So it's gonna be right up in this area and you're just gonna stitch one line of stitching from one side where your marks start all the way across. This is your side seam here and then ending right here at the other one. And you're gonna you know, be sure that you back stitch at the beginning and end on both of these and that's gonna form the casing. So you'll do one on this side and then you'll flip it over and you'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, we have the casings marked and sewn and we are ready to put the elastic in them. Now we're gonna work from the inside, from that hole that we have inside the lining, and I have my elastic cut. There's a little chart that tells you how long to cut it for each size, and I've got a safety pin on each of them. I'm gonna use one safety pin to run it through the casing and the other to kind of catch the end and also to be able to pull it through the other way if I need to in case I lose the end. Because if you just use, if you just put it on one end, so many times you will lose the second end and have to start over. So go inside and find that hole, which is over here. It's a little bit trickier when you're on the opposite side from the, um, you know, the hole is on the opposite side of the leg you're working on, but you can just get, get that elastic in your hand. I've got it in my hand, I'm working through the hole, and I'm just gonna pull it all the way through the casing here. And um, hopefully I won't have too much trouble when I get here to the side seam. Sometimes that's a little bit tricky. And I guess I held my mouth right because that one went right through. So we are gonna take and work that safety pin all the way through the casing until I get to the end here. Now the goal is to, um, is to have one half of an inch of elastic past the place where we stop the casing. We are gonna stitch right along this blue line that I marked the um, casing with and I've got my safety pin right in here. You can feel it there. And this is something you just kind of have to guesstimate and feel eyeball in the light if you can to figure out exactly how much length you have past the casing. But once you feel decently good about it, you can just put a pin in that end to hold it in place for now. And then we'll come back here to the other end and try to find that elastic the pin and it actually was right there at the end. Now remember this is not as full of a bubble um, so it's not going to be as roughly along the leg as maybe what you're used to. Um, but that's what we're working with with this pattern. Um, and so same thing on the other side just make sure that your safety pin is about half of an inch um, or your elastic is about half of an inch with a safety pin on it past your little line where you're ending your casing. And I'm going to stick a pin in there too. And um, now I can stitch along this on both ends to secure that casing in place and then of course or secure the elastic in place. And then of course I can kind of move it along to kind of spread it out and everything once I've got it sewn. Don't forget to go back in and remove your safety pins so they don't live inside your garment forever. So you've got one leg to do and then you'll do the other leg. I've actually already done this one. So this is what it's gonna look like when it's finished. It's just the elastic is all inside there and I'm stitched right along that line, those two little marks that we made. So that's what that side's gonna look like and the other one will look like that when we're done. Um, after you've gotten your casings done and everything, then we don't need this hole on the inside anymore. A Couple of different ways that you can fix that, repair that hole, not repair it, put it together. Um, if you want, you can just pinch it up. You've got it pressed in. You've got the quarter inch pressed in already. If you wanna just pinch it up and just stitch right along here, right along the very close edge with your sewing machine, you can do that. Truthfully, what I usually do is just take it and whip it by hand across there to close that opening on the inside. Either way works just fine. So take care of your casings and elastic and closing up the hole and we will be ready for the next thing. Okay, here we are and we are ready to finish up. Um, next thing to do are the grippers on the bottom. 
Um, I have three, one, two, three, and they are just spaced evenly along the bottom of the crotch. The front overlaps the back and it overlaps, the overlap area is three quarters of an inch. That gives you plenty of room for your three snaps. These are metal snaps. And so they, um, you know, you put them in with a hammer. If you like to use the cam snaps that are plastic, that certainly would work there, but this is how it looks. Front overlaps the back and they just snap in place. I usually kind of gingerly open these up as I do it. You can't just go ripping fast. Um, you know, they, um, I haven't had a lot of trouble with them coming apart or I didn't when I was making these for babies all the time, but it can happen where they will pop and come apart. But um, I would just say, try to be gentle and easy as you open them up just to be sure. Um, let's move to the buttons. Now, you know, the finish length of this is going to be affected by where we put the button on the strap. You know, the further down the strap we put the button, the longer it's going to be. Ideally, you might have the baby around you and you could try it on them and see exactly where that button needs to go on the strap to make the fit the best for this particular baby. Um, but if you don't have someone and you want to just make the average um, recommended length for a 12 month, which is what this is, um, you can look on the back of any of the children's corner bubble patterns. You can see this online if you don't happen to have the pattern. But um, so for a 12 month, which is what I've got, it's supposed to be 17 and a half inches. So I've got this lined up at 17 or at, at, at the zero mark down on the bottom of this um, measuring board here. And I've come up to 17 and a half. And if I just fold my strap over there, that's going to give me my 17 and a half correct length. And then that would tell me that the button needs to go right about in here. And that's going to be about an inch and a half from the bottom of the strap on this size. So that's one way that you can make it the exact correct length if you want. Um, so I'm going to sew my button right there on the strap at one and a half inches from that end. Now, um, let's talk about buttonhole placement on the facing. It is going to be generally in this area right here. It's a vertical buttonhole. buttonhole and it's gonna be centered within this length here, with this length here, and then also with this. So you can get your pattern piece out. It will be, should be correct for you um, if you want to take that and you should be able to see. Now remember this has um, two different markings for buttonholes on here. It does have the traditional one and then it also has that really wide one that we were gonna use if, um, or that they used if they made the straps in a different way that there is this little vertical one here, and so you can use that marking as your measurement for where your buttonhole goes, if you would like. Anyway, so that's all that I think you need to know. I will say one other thing, if you are gonna mail this to somebody and you don't know how long to make it or where to put your buttons, you know, you can always put one here, and then you could put one up here, where they had an option to choose which button they buttoned it into. You would need to have four buttons for that, but that does give you, them a little bit of growing room um, as the baby gets longer, taller. Um, so that, that'll give you a little bit of wiggle room if you need that. Anyway, I'll come back with it all done and you will get to see. Okay, here we are with the finished product. I love how it turned out. It was so fun sewing something for a boy this time around. This is such a great pattern for boys or girls. Love how we can use a novelty fabric for the body, or we could do something, you know, swap it up and do something pretty up here at the top and something more solid at the bottom. So many options with this pattern. Really cute in the front and the back. I love this elephant fabric. I think it's really, really cute for a little boy, or I guess it could be girl too. Um, I'll probably be in trouble. I probably should apologize to my, um, to my son and also to my good friends that are Auburn fans or an Auburn student as he is, although certainly he's not going to be watching a sewing video. Um, anyway, glad you could watch this. Hope you're able to make a Madison and enjoy that. Let us know if you have any questions about it or any problems that come up. We'll be happy to answer that and happy sewing. See you next time.